Yes. We are recording. Excellent. Welcome, fellow Toastmasters and guests. This meeting of online presenters has now begun. Guests, please note that in order to be a member of our club, you must be a current or former active member of Toastmasters International and have completed at least six features from either the traditional or pathways programs. Or you must have substantial relevant presentation experience that you demonstrate in three to five minute speech delivered during one of our club meetings. All requests for membership are subject to board approval. If you have not already done so, please change your panel to ensure it shows your name and role if you have one. Right click and select rename to do so. We have members and often guests from many countries throughout the world. Thus, at the professional organization, we ask that you please be aware of language or word usage that may be considered offensive or otherwise insensitive due to cultural differences. Please note, we will be recording the meeting. Your video audio contributions may be used for our club marketing purposes. Also, please mute your microphone when you are not speaking. The themes of today's meeting, empty nest syndrome. Please welcome our club president, Nick Lahani. Thank you very much, Andre. Thank you for that. Welcome to the last meeting of September. Are you getting colder now in the Northern Hemisphere? We've got our cardigans and sweaters on, haven't we? Today, I'm gonna to talk to you, just start off with the mission for online presenters. Well, as I understand it, the mission of online presenters is to get better at um, presenting online, yes. That's brilliant. It does what it says on the tin. And that's one of the reasons I remember and I'm honored to be president here for you today. And I'm really looking forward to today's meeting. I'm gonna introduce a Toastmaster who just happens to be myself. And as Toastmaster, I've decided to have the theme of empty nest syndrome. Does anybody know what that means? Well, Okay, well, I know some of you do, or you'll know somebody who does. Um, I looked it up, I had to look it up. Apparently, it's for parents, especially mothers, who get down, maybe get the blues, or even lead to uh, uh, some depression after their kids leave home for work, university, college, whatever it is. Well, the reason I looked it up is my son left home. He's gone to university. And I've been looking at coping strategies. How do I deal with this? Well, luckily, with this particular instance, I've been looking at this for the last couple of years, and I've actually put in some coping strategies, things that I will actually do with my son when he comes home from university, that we can just hang out rather than be father and son. We go and play sports, watch football, uh, we even go down to the pub as well, well, when we're allowed. One of the biggest things is, it's about change and how we look at it and if we approach it in a positive manner. That's what I want you to think about today. How do you approach things in a positive manner? Although I've got to admit, yesterday I looked in my mirror and as I was putting my face on, you know, something like this. We actually went and just thought about this. I looked in the mirror. I looked in the mirror as I was getting ready and a little tear came out of my eye. Oh, yes, I miss my son, but that's not what the tear was for. Yes, he's a long way away, but that's not what the tear is for. It's because he took my blooming beard trimmer. Look at this. Oh, my word. So, there's always things that you miss people for, and it's okay. 
Um, Amazon is sending another one very, very soon, I hear. Now, let's get serious. Let's switch off all of these little uh, tricks that we have and let's literally get people involved and introduce our role players today. Please welcome our timer today, Mr. Lou Brown. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmaster and guests as timer. It is my duty to keep all of the speakers on track and that is everyone who is speaking, speeches, table topics, reports, etc. For everyone who, uh, actually everyone who is speaking, I'll also be uh, making sure that you stick to those times. And with that said, whenever you go over the maximum time, and I'm gonna give you about a 15 second deviation on top of the stated deviation, I will clap you off. So please keep that in mind because it's very important that we stick to the agenda. I'll announce the times later during each segment. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Lou. And please make sure you send us a written report in the chat as well. That would be wonderful. Thank you for that. Let's welcome our, our counter today, Dr. Latasha. Hello, everyone. Um, I am the our counter today, and I already had a fumble. I said, um, so I'm going to be checking for the um, the ahs, likes, your nose, and any filler words, and I'll be keeping track of those. I do want to share, though, that I found the cure to emptiness syndrome. I was about five years away from emptiness syndrome and then I found out that we're expecting a baby. So I had 18 more years of having a full nest. <laughs> Thank you. And I pass it back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Latasha. I'm actually interviewing for, for uh, uh, Mrs. Nick version two. Uh, yes, I like that idea of making more babies. I'm all for that. And well this done. is my husband number two for me. So. <laughs> <laughs> well, that's okay. We, we're always looking for an upgrade. Oh, always on the lookout. Thank you very much. Let's introduce our grammarian today. Please welcome Nikenji Warren Swan. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. My role as grammarian today is to encourage and command the good use of language, record notable uses of language, and to give a report at the end. The word of sentence, the many sides of modern parenting. I am looking for 13 uses of that word today. Please, let's make it happen. Over to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Nikenje. Just confirmed the word of the day is parenting. Excellent. What, what wonderful subject that we're talking about here. Excellent. Thank you. Please welcome our watcher today, Mr. Carl Walsh. Hi. My job to today, I'm I'm going to be watching you, okay? I'm going to be watching every, everybody. And if I can, I'm going to give some good parenting advice on how to create your in, environment that we, that we see and make sure that we can see you well and fully. Thank you very much, Carl. The next uh, helper today is our chat monitor, Christian Ramchen. Thank you, Mr. Toastmasters. So as chat monitor, I'll be monitoring you kids. I'm sorry, you Toastmasters in the chat. Do use it very effectively. Uh, word of recommendation, while our speakers are delivering, please consider minimizing your use of the chat, but do give feedback to each of the speaker afterwards. Thank you so much. And I'll give you my report at the end of the session, how it was for me and for everyone. Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Christian. Next, our vote counter, please welcome Amelia Wood. Hello, fellow Toastmasters and all our guests. I will be counting the votes, so after the different sessions, you get a chance to send your votes to me ASAP through the chat, and then I'll just send it to the Toastmaster and our president later on. Have a good meeting. Thank you very much, Amelia. Thank you. Now, we're going to move on to our first segment, which is the 
prepared speeches. We have three wonderful speeches today. And what I'm going to do, I'm going to introduce them one by one, and they are going to deliver. Therefore, speaker number one is going to be Antoinette Trim. Most of us feel very special when invited to a wedding. In our region, many of us would go the extra mile to purchase a new dress or shoes just to attend a wedding. However, this wedding did not turn out to be what it was supposed to be. With engaging humor level three, connect with storytelling, with the title of an invitation to a wedding, please welcome Antoinette Trim. Good evening, Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters and guests. Everyone was really excited for this couple because they were getting married. Actually, they belong to the same social club that I am in. Many of us received invitations and I was so elated to receive mine. The week before the wedding, I journeyed to town to one of my favorite stores to purchase a dress. Of course, once in the store, it took me a little while to decide which dress to purchase. Finally, I made up my mind. I placed the dress in the bag and carried it home. The day of the wedding finally arrived. I put on my dress. Actually, I was stone pussy dress. That phrase is like you are dressed for the occasion. It was a favorite dress. But when you reached to the event, you realized that you were overly dressed. However, on journeying to the wedding, I turned into the churchyard. But to my surprise, just few vehicles were parked in the churchyard. And even more strange, when I got out from the vehicle, went into the church hall, just two persons were there. I spoke to them, we spoke a lot and we were just waiting. But what was strange though, is that we weren't seeing anybody coming to the wedding. And in my region, anyone who receives an invitation, say for the invitation is nine o'clock is the wedding, it is highly recommended that you reach an hour late because more likely than not, the bride will be late. After we, the folks there, we were talking and so on. I decided, you know what? Let me call a friend to find out what's happening. I called my friend. And this was the conversation that we had. Piano. I'm at the wedding and I hardly seen anybody. You know anything? You have heard anything? My friend replied, Girl, you didn't hear the groom stage his own accident because he didn't want to marry the bride to be. I said, What? What you saying? I asked my friend, I said, but what about the bridesmaid? The dresses, the time they took to go to the seamstress. What about the groomsmen? Their suits were all tailor-made. What even about the bride? She said, girl, bacchanal in the city. My heart sank. I was really disappointed with the news. I told my, the two folks who were there, and we all sadly 
got up and returned to our homes. The takeaway from that lesson was never count your chickens before they've hatched. Back to you, Toastmaster of the Day. Thank you very much. Antoinette, uh, I just wanted to confirm the evaluators that we have. We, we have uh, for evaluating Antoinette, we have Brian David Crawford. For evaluating our next speaker, who uh, is going to be Pamela Benjamin. And the third speaker is, uh, evaluator is going to be Andres Malenko. All right. Now, our second speaker that I'd like to introduce uh, is Marianne Grady. Marianne has been a member of Online Presenters since March of this year. She is a retired HR leader and is in the process of launching a new coaching business. Tonight, she is de delivering her Level 2 Project 1 speech in the Effective Coaching Path and the Discovering Your Leadership Style project. Please give, uh, with the title of Ever Evolving, please give a very warm welcome for Marianne Grady. I can't wait until I'm the boss, when I get to call the shots. I got my office down the hall in the corner. These were some of my earliest notions of leadership. But as many of you know, thoughts like these will not put you on the fast track to leadership. As a matter of fact, they might indicate that you're a little self-involved and perhaps not leadership material. And I've had bosses like that. I've also had good bosses and all of them have helped me evolve. You learn different things from different bosses. Sometimes you learn what to do and sometimes what not to do. Hello friends, tonight I'd like to share with you three scenarios that have happened throughout my career at different points that have helped me shape my leadership philosophy. First, I was a paralegal at a law firm years ago and for some reason I was thrown at the last minute on to get this brief done. I had to complete citations and I was furiously researching. I, when I was done, I got in my car and drove to the courthouse to file it before they closed. What I hadn't taken into account was that there was construction going on and I couldn't find a parking place. I missed a very big deadline. Immediately, I got on the phone and frantically begged the judge's law clerk to give me an extension of a day. And she graciously obliged but I couldn't help that foreboding when I thought about having to go back to the partner and let him know about my mistake. When he returned in from depositions that day, I sheepishly went into his office, explained what happened, and he said, okay. Okay, I thought I was gonna get fired. This is a big deal. And he looked at me and he said, Marianne, everyone makes mistakes. You work hard and you fixed the problem already. And by the looks of you, I think you beat yourself up enough today. Wow, in that moment, the moment when I had made my biggest mistake, he made me feel like a valuable member of his team. From him, I learned that I need to focus on the hard work of my people, not their mistakes. Everyone who works for me is free to make mistakes that's not the same one again and again. Next, fast forward several years and I'm in a different job. It's five o'clock on Halloween night. I say to my boss, I'm gonna head home to take my little ones out trick-or-treating. He said, what? Oh no, we have a report to get done. Every fiber of my being wanted to say no to him, but I didn't. I didn't have the courage or the confidence, and I stayed and finished. I didn't get home until nine o'clock that night. I saw my little darlings, happy as could be, all disheveled, counting their loot. 
but I felt terrible. I had missed a big night in their life. I vowed that I would never do something like that again. This leader taught me that I need to set personal boundaries and that one day when I had a team of my own, I would never have them make impossible decisions. Now, my last example is about accountability. Holding people accountable is never easy. And I had a woman on my team who was underperforming. At review time, we sat and went over the deficiencies and talked about how we would move forward to improve them. But as the year wore on, there was no change. And I kept making excuses. The biggest one I made for not dealing with the problem was that she's a single mom and she's the sole provider for her family. But then when the following year came around, reviews again, and nothing had changed, I knew I had to do something. I drew up the paperwork and terminated her. The members of my team looked at me and said, what took you so long? And it was then I realized that my inability to hold this woman accountable had impacted not just me, but my entire team's productivity and their morale. It taught me that I have to deal with things in the moment as they occur, and I give feedback often. So leadership, in my opinion, is a great privilege, whether you're doing it at home or in the office. And you need to take it seriously. You should always be learning and ever evolving. You need to be looking to the future so you can anticipate what's going on and develop a strategy so you're acting and not reacting to what's going on in the world around you. The most important thing, you need to care about your people and their path forward. Because it's like the golden rule. You do unto others like you want them to do for you. And if you don't think that you can do these things, then perhaps you should not be a leader. My proudest moment came at the end of my career. Last October, when they held my retirement dinner, my direct reports got up and gave a talk and said very nice things. And in her closing remarks, she looked right at me with tears in her eyes and said, Marianne, you taught me that I can be both a strong HR professional and a good mom. And at that moment, I knew that that Halloween memory had come full circle. My challenge to you tonight is ask yourself, why would anyone want to follow you? Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, Marianne. Thank you. Now our third speaker is Roxanne Hussein. The story of David and Goliath is one of Judeo-Christian tradition, which has been told for centuries. Many of us know it, or know of it, but how well do we really know what drove David in his quest against Goliath? David's motivation may just be like ours. Roxanne is on the presentation Mastery Path, and it's, this is project is connected with storytelling, and the title is A Lesson in Motivation. Please give a very warm hand for Roxanne Hossein. Thank you, Toastmaster. Our fellow Toastmasters, who here knows the story of David and Goliath? If that's you, raise your hand, I, I want to see. All right, it seems to be a majority, but I'm not seeing every hand go up. So let me ask this. Raise your hand if you've never heard of David and Goliath. Never heard. All right, I'm not seeing any hands on never heard, but I didn't see every hand on heard. So uh, for those of you who don't know the story, spoiler alert. It is the story of the underdog's triumph over the giant, where in this story, David is the supposed underdog. 
But for those of you who are familiar with the story, and that's whether you have read the Bible account or it's just based on a passing knowledge, based on your knowledge of the story, I'd like you to just write in the chat for me what you think motivated David in this quest. And give me something, because I am looking for some answers. Power or courage, honor, revenge, to be a hero. The winning prize. All right, so we are hearing a lot of, of what we have supposed it to be. But let me go back to the beginning and set the stage for you. The Israelites and the Philistines were at war. They had drawn battle lines in the Valley of Elah with the Philistines occupying one hill and the Israelites led by King Saul occupying another with the valley plain between them. Goliath was a champion of the Philistine army. He was an imposing nine feet, nine inches tall. And he had a helmet of bronze on his head. And he wore a coat of bronze that weighed 125 pounds. Think of it. His coat alone weighed 125 pounds. Now, can you imagine a situation wearing 125 pounds like a garment? Can you think of that? Now, Goliath would come out every day and challenge the army. And he would say, and for this, I am reading from the NIV version. Goliath would come to the battle and he would say, why do you come out and line up to do battle? Am I not a Philistine? And are you not servants of Saul? Send a man down, have him come and do battle with me. And if he defeats me, we will serve you. But if I defeat him, you will become our servants. And this terrified the Israelites. And this went on every morning and every evening for 40 days. Now, David was an Israelite from the country, and he was the youngest of eight boys, or in this case, eight men. His three older brothers had gone off to the front line to the war with Saul. And compared to his brothers, David was a runt. And his father, although those older boys were men, he was still parenting. And he had David running as a runner from the front line to home, taking supplies to his brothers, and then coming back to tend to the sheep. And one day, his father sent David up to the front line with some grain and some bread for his sons and some cheese for the captains and to check on the older brothers at the front line and bring back some good news. And David packed up and went as he was instructed to do. Now, when David got there, he sent his, oh, what's happening? Uh, your video's just gone off. Oh, shoot, let me see if I can fix that. Is it back? Because uh, I'm not, not seeing my screen. Okay, not yet, no. Oh, no. 
Okay, you're back. Ah. Thank you. All right. I'm going to pick right up. David reached the camp just as the armies were going out to their battle positions, shouting their war cry. And David left his things with the keeper of the supplies and ran out to the front line to ask his brothers how they were. And as he was talking to them, Goliath stepped out from his line and shouted his usual defiance. And David heard it. Now, the Israelites had been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give him his daughter in marriage and will exempt his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men who were standing there, what will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him, this is what would be done for the man who kills him. Then his oldest brother heard him speaking with the men and he got angry at him. And David said to him, what have I done? Can't I even speak? Then he turned from him and turned to someone else and asked his question as he had before. And the men told him once again what they had said. Now word got back to Saul and Saul sent for David. I'm going to stop the story right there. For Thank those you of you much. who don't know the story, uh, David took a stone, swung it in a sling, hit the giant, dab in the front of his head, killing him, ran up to him, adding insult to injury, cut off his own head with his own sword. But thank, thank you, Roxanne. Thank you. We have very to cut much. you short, Roxanne. Okay. Sorry. All right. Yeah. Thank you. We, we uh, te technical challenges today, I'm afraid. Well all done. right. Thank all right. You. All right. I hope I get to present it again. <laughs> uh, definitely will. Uh, Mr. Timer, please, can you give us a quick report on times? Certainly. We have Antoinette coming in at four minutes and 30 seconds, just in under the wire. Marianne at six minutes, 38 seconds. And Roxanne did go over a little bit um, at eight minutes and 10 seconds. Okay, four minutes and 30. Is that still allowed for voting? Yes, 30 second deviation on front and back. Okay, brilliant. So please, can you vote for uh, Antoinette or uh, Marianne? And please send your votes by private chat to vote counter Amelia. Thanks very much. So please send your votes in now. We're going to move on to our next segment. Now, we sometimes do this, and what's really special is when we have members, new members joining, we want to do a little ceremony, make it special for them. So I would like at this point to hand over to Vice President of Membership, Lou Brown. Take it away, Lou. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster. Yes, we, uh, folks, we have a wonderful club. I mean, we have so many great individuals, members, and of course, we also have some wonderful guests. And we have two particular guests who said, you know what? Online presenters are so awesome that I want to join your club. So how wonderful of Pamela Benjamin and Mafuzor, who perhaps may correct me on the pronunciation of your name, sir, if you will. Rahman, who will be inducted as new members of our club at this meeting. I'm going to share my screen real quickly. And here we go, fellow Toastmasters and honored guests on behalf of online presenters Toastmasters. It is my duty and privilege to induct the following new members into our club, Pamela Benjamin and Mafuzur Rahman. This is an important occasion both for these individuals and for our club. As experienced speakers and Toastmasters, these individuals will enrich us as we strive to enrich them in a spirit of sharing and enjoyment. Together, we expand our effectiveness as dynamic leaders, presenters, and communicators. 
New members, please wait until I call on each of you individually to affirm your commitment to the Toastmaster Promise, which I will summarize next. In the presence of fellow online presenters, do you each pledge to attend meetings regularly and prepare for each assignment? to actively participate in club activities, to evaluate others in a positive, constructive manner, to build open, friendly relationships with our fellow members, and to bring other new members into our club so that they too can gain the benefits of Toastmasters. Pamela, please unmute and say, I do. I do. Wonderful. Mafuzur, please unmute and say, I do. I do. Wonderful. Now you, the current members of Online Presenters, I remind you of your pledge to support these new members in their quest for self-development, to provide them with positive, helpful evaluations, to maintain a friendly, supportive atmosphere, and to make their Online Presenters Toastmasters membership a rewarding and fulfilling experience. Congratulations, Pamela and Mafuzor. Welcome to Online Presenters. Everyone, feel free to unmute and give them a round of applause. Welcome. Well Thank done. You. Well awesome. done. Back to you, Mr. Toastmaster. Thank you very much, uh, Mr. Vice President Membership, and congratulations, Mafazor and Pamela. Welcome. Now, our next segment is going to be another exciting uh, bit of the meeting, which is going to be handled by our table topic master. Please give a very warm hand for the one, the only, Angela. Heath. Thank you, uh, Mr. Toastmaster of the day, fellow Toastmasters. I have the honor of serving as a topics master for this meeting. And that simply means that I can choose anyone I'd like to get the opportunity to practice extemporaneous speaking. And that just means that you're going to speak off the cuff. The theme for today is the emptiness syndrome, as we heard earlier, and that's when the children are leaving home and it is marked by sadness. And so, Donna, would you be willing, I still see Donna, would you be willing to share with us, um, there is this new syndrome that has come out and is actually opposite. It is called the fullness syndrome. And that is when the children return back home. Donna, tell us, how do you feel about this new fullness syndrome? Oh, my dear. Oh, my dear. I like empty nest. I grew up, I have two sisters and a brother, at least I had two sisters and a brother who lived at home. And when I was very small, I never grew up with them. When I went to live with them, I wanted to be alone, even to this very day. And so as a child growing up, I would be with my great grandmother who would be watching TV and she would fall asleep. When all my siblings and relatives were around the other room watching TV on this little bit of screen. And I loved it. When you talk about having a fullness, I do understand some people need it. And if you need it, have it and enjoy it. But if you grew up in a situation like I did, where I just loved being alone and finding a corner or a room when I was younger to read a book or to just escape in some good movie, having a fullness bothers me. But I must admit that COVID-19 makes me craving a little bit more for a little bit more hug, a little bit more attention. But when I get it, I tell my friends, the thing I miss with COVID-19 is that I've lost the right to ignore my friends. Because now I just want them. They ask me, what do I mean? I said, you know, you always had your friends, you made sure they were okay, but now you are forced to stay away. Having a full nest, whatever it means to you, whatever you want, have all the people around you and love them. For me, I want them in the other room. Madam Tabletop, it's master. <laughs> Fellow Toastmasters and guests, the word of the day is parenting. 
And we think of that as supporting children as they grow and they thrive. Toastmaster Marty, would you be willing to share with us a time when a child had to parent you? You're on mute. And you bottom left button, Marty. Got All it. Thank you. Yes, I have a memory of such a time. You see, I have two remarkable children, and they have on occasion had to be my parent, even though the ages were wrong. One of those times was fairly recent. What happened was that I was forced to confine myself to somewhere, my bed most, mostly, not because of COVID, but because I had other problems a number of them, none of them very big, just many of them a pain. So luckily for me, I have not only two wonderful grown children, but I also, courtesy of one of those two, have two grand dogs. Neither one has any children, you see, but my daughter, has two dogs, and they are amazing. Well, it was not that long ago that I found I had to get myself gathered up and into bed because I had problems, big problems. And on that occasion, my daughter was kind enough to bring the grand dogs over. My son came over and among the three of them, when I say three, I mean four, they parented me. They were wonderful. And that I will remember forever. Back to you, Madam whoever Topics Master is. <laughs> Thank you, Marty. Speaking of syndromes, there's another one going around which is connected to parenting. And it is called the helicopter parent. It's a syndrome. And uh, Toastmaster Elaine, I'm wondering if you could explain to us a little bit more about this syndrome called helicopter parenting. Helicopter parenting. I'm really curious whether other Toastmasters, people in this room have ever heard this figure of speech before. I have not. So I'll make a guess. A helicopter hovers, um, might be making a lot of noise, uh, might be shining spotlights down on something. Uh, might be calling out <laughs> uh, voices if it's, if it's like the police from afar. I guess there are parents that hover, that sometimes show spotlights, that sometimes yell from kind of far away. And whether they're effective or not, I don't know. But I understand why some parents who are parenting might want to keep a distance by helicoptering. Now you see the interesting part of that word is hell. Sometimes parenting is hell and it's a little bit easier to distance yourself, but still give yourself props, props, <laughs> uh, by being involved somehow. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. 
Thank you, Elaine. That was really good. Okay, I think we have time for another. Um, let's see, who's left? Um, parenting really, you know, it, it has no age boundaries in a way. And oftentimes we find that people have to parent their parents. Um, so Lucas, has there ever been a time when you had to parent either your parent or someone much older than you? Share that experience with us. Sure, I actually have a recent experience because when I went to Pennsylvania to visit family and I went with my mom. And what I find myself doing as far as parenting, I guess, would be helping her to understand the technology that she uses that includes using her iPhone to the fullest extent possible, such as putting your boarding pass on your phone, how to properly work headphones. I'm sad to say I had to parent or show her how to do that. And just keeping schedules on track in terms of when we had to leave in order to make it to the airport on time, keeping in mind that we had to return a car, our, our rental car. So those are just a few examples of how I had to parent my parent. And that's basically what, what I end up doing. It all has to do with technology and assisting her in these kinds of things when we do end up traveling uh, together at some point or another. Back to you, Madam Table Topics Master. Thank you, Lucas. And it looks like we may have time for maybe one more. Um, Ma Madam Topic Master, yes, you have yeah. time for one more, perhaps for Tiana. I'm sorry? Uh, perhaps for one of the, uh, the members, Tiana. Okay. So Tiana. Hello. There's this other syndrome that's kind of related to this. It's sort of related. It's called adulting. Mm -hmm. It's a syndrome. It's when the adults want to leave the kids behind and go, thing, go do things that the children aren't old enough to do. Have you ever had this syndrome? Do you know people who have had this syndrome? Talk to us about what you think it is and what your experience has been. Adulting. Adulting. That's an interesting syndrome. And I'm just wondering what my daughter would think about this adulting syndrome. Because not too long ago, she told me, mom, my dad, he's an adult, but you're just big. I don't really know what that means at that time, but I think she might be thinking about how adulting might look like. And what I say is that we as supposed to be like, we're supposed to be adults, but we all want to enjoy the childhood and the feeling of being a kid and doing those things and just have fun and not caring too much about what other people are going to think about us and just enjoy life. And this, they do it very, very, very well. So what I think about, when I think about kids and this syndrome of doing things early, I think that we all want to really get back together to that time, get back to those childhood. And when they see adults having fun, when they see adults being themselves, I think just the child just get inspired to have a better life. So, I would say that we all should be examples of big childs to our kids and enjoy a little bit more of our child side and childhood while we're still adults and while we're still here, right? <laughs> That's our next stage. Okay, back to you, Madame Toastmaster. Thank you. 
So thank you all of the Toastmasters who participated. And finally, I just want to encourage us all that uh, parenting has its place and so does adulting. So whichever you choose, enjoy. Back to you, Toastmaster of the day. Thank you very much, Angela. Uh, I really appreciate you taking on board the uh, theme and what a wonderful set of questions and what a wonderful set of answers to everybody. Thank you. Mr. Lu Mr. Timer, can you actually give us a quick report? Did all uh, speakers qualify? Sorry, yes, Mr. Toastmaster, all speakers qualified. I just put their times in the chat box. Back to you. Brilliant. So please vote for your favorite table topic. You can vote for Donna, Marty, Elaine, Lucas, or Tiada. Please send that to our vote counter, Amelia. By, by private chat, of course. Thank you very much for that. Now that's the second major part uh, segment of our meeting over. And about 30 seconds too early, may, maybe early, I'd like to welcome our general evaluator to the stand. Please give a very warm welcome for the one, the only, Graham, I live in another uh, day, Kenz. Thank you, Mr. Toastmaster, fellow Toastmasters, and most welcome guests. My role is general evaluator. That is to head the evaluation section of the meeting and to give some feedback on the meeting as an overall thing a little later. We have three speech evaluators tonight because we have had three speeches. Now, everybody here is a Toastmaster or has had experience with Toastmasters Club, so I don't need to flog the dead horse here, but I genuinely believe that evaluation is the cornerstone of the Toastmasters experience. Sitting here flapping our gums is all well and good, but unless we get feedback, we might as well just be talking to ourselves. So to provide that feedback, to give suggestions on improvement, but also to point out what speakers have done really well and should never lose, I'm going to have three evaluations tonight. The first of those evaluators is Brian David Crawford, BDC, who is going to be evaluating our first speaker. For a period of two to three minutes, ladies and gentlemen, Brian David Crawford. Thank you so much, Graham. Fellow Toastmasters, honored guests, but specifically Antoinette. Antoinette, I love this speech because it was a very relatable subject. It was something we all could comprehend. We all have been to disasters of weddings. We all have experienced them. We've all seen television shows and heard about just everything going wrong. So you gave us this topic that hooked us and brought us right into it. We wanted to hear how was this going to go well. You set us up with this great story about getting your dress and all these things, and we just kept waiting and waiting and waiting for all to fall apart. And it did. And that made this happy. Now, if there was one thing that I felt, one thing that could really make um, everyone's, the speech a little stronger is if we talk about gestures. You didn't have too many gestures. For the most part, you just kind of moved forward and moved back and moved forward and back until the very end when you talked about counting your chickens before they hatched. And at that point, you had a very strong hand motion. It shows that you know how to use good motions. But that could have been used throughout the other part of the speech. You could have talked about popping up the shirt. You could have talked about looking pretty. You could have done a lot of other gestures that really would have helped flush it out. When I think about what makes Toastmasters so great is this is an opportunity to continually challenge yourself, check and adjust and try new things. And I feel like when I listen to you, you are very comfortable here in this club. You're very comfortable giving us speeches. You're very comfortable participating. You don't seem to have any nerves. And that is incredible. I want you to get scared. I want you to try something new. One of the things that I'm trying this week, and a problem I think you have as well, I wear glasses. And so before, I would sit here and have my light right in front of me, and I would have all these things preventing people from seeing my actual eyes reflecting off my glasses. Today, I took my camera and I moved it away from my screens to a 45 degree angle over here. Now, one of the problems is I only have one light source here, which is why I can't go like this, because this side of my face is completely dark. So that's the thing we're all trying to do. We're all trying to get better every time. I know that this is the right angle for me to do Toastmasters. I just need a light over here and then 
it'll be a much better picture. Antoinette, I'd love to see you think about that. Move your camera away from where it currently is. Move your lights a little higher. Do things like that to give you this wonderful view that's going to challenge you and scare you at the same time. I look forward to seeing what you bring next. Thank you very much. Back to you, our, toast, our Mr. General Evaluator. Yay, thank you, BDC. Thank you for that evaluation. I'll give you an evaluation of your evaluation a little later. But before I do that, we should call on our second evaluator. There's a lot of evaluation going on here. I feel like I'm parenting all of these evaluations. I had to get the parenting in somehow. Uh, Pamela Benjamin will be presenting our second evaluation again for a period of two to three minutes. Here's Pamela. Hello, online presenters. This is my maiden voyage, and this is my first evaluation. And this is especially to Marianne. Marianne, I think you've done this a few times. I've had my Toastmaster checklist box, checklist box all ready to go, and you sailed through one after the next, one of the next. So I had to drill down to find some ways to help you become an even better speaker. Now, what I would suggest is gestures, gestures, gestures. You were very close to the screen. I could see your eyes. I could see your facial movements the entire time. And not only did I see those, I felt incredible passion and energy as you spoke. Now, how can I help you get better? How can I help you get to the next level? I think what you should do is chop some of your stories down because you had a phenomenal intro, you had an incredible ending, and you had three stories pushed in between them. And they were incredible stories with a tremendous amount of words. I think if you would have cut some of those stories down and found the high point and gave a moment or two to give us that impact part, I think it would have been so much more dramatic. I love your energy. I love your passion. But slowing down, pulling back, will just want us to have more and more of what you say. I think the times that you could have had the most dramatic portions of your speech was if you asked us directly, why would anyone want to follow you? I think that would be powerful, but you set it up with a little bit more introduction. But just leaving that hang in the air would have been a powerful phrase to close on. And I think when you opened it, I can't wait till I'm boss. How about you? See, just that little pause, it just brings us all in, doesn't it? So Marianne, you are an incredible speaker. You've done this before. Chop those stories a little bit, take a pause, and just reel us in. There's not much more to do. There's not much more to go. Thank you. Thank you, Pamela, for that. And I have to say, for a maiden voyage, there were no icebergs in that evaluation. Congratulations. Our third evaluator tonight is Andre Sm uh, Sl I'm sorry, Andre, I know how to say Smolenko, but I'm not going to be able to get it right. So, Andre Smolenko with our third evaluation. Thank you, Mr. General Evaluator, fellow Toastmasters, most welcome guests, and most importantly, Roxane. Uh, what a lesson in motivation. What a really powerful lesson in motivation you gave to me. Yes, let's be honest, your speech had a few glitches. However, the powerful come back in your motivation. Well, things sometimes don't go according to the plan. Yes, we all know it. So what? We're all here to practice. And the way you handled that little mm, mischief with your video and slides, who cares? You came back smiling. What's a brilliant lesson in motivation? What's a powerful story you choose? The story known to all of us, David and Goliath. And everyone in the, most of the people in the audience, they raised their hands. It was great audience participation. This is what you asked me to look out for. You connected with the audience brilliantly. 
at the same time, um, I've noticed that from time to time, because you are standing up and moving and you are going off the screen, from time to time, I just really couldn't see your head properly like that. That is just a minor thing. Overall, those three, a power of three that you used to bring our attention to your story, that was visual and clear. The audience participation in chat, please write me a message. I did, and you took the time to notice most of the people who responded to you. I think it shows the clarity and power in your presentation speech. Roxane, you are an experienced speaker. I could tell that. I really love your bubbly enthusiasm. And I could really take a lesson in motivation from you. At the same time, I think your speech would be much more powerful when things don't go according to the plan as they always or sometimes do. Important to remember how you're going to finish your speech. One thing with the powerful message, then if anything not going according to the plan, you can just nicely put it in. I like the structure of your speech. I like the opening, the audience engagement and participation. And the way you handle that things don't go according to the plan, never mind. Overall, I'm sure the next speech, when you take things on board, will bring you, your speech to a much powerful, better conclusion. Overall, I look forward to it. And a lesson in motivation that I took from you, never give up. Keep smiling, things will go better. Back to you, Mr. General Evaluator. Thank you, Andre. Thank you for all of our evaluators tonight. And thank you for all of the people who've been filling ancillary roles, including, for example, the timekeeper. Uh, Lou, can you let us know how we've gone? I see them just appearing in the chat, so you can speak if you wish to. Or sure. Just move on. Yep. All times are in the chat. Please vote for your favorite evaluator. <laughs> Cool. Back all you. three, all three are eligible. So please send your votes for the best evaluator for either Brian, Pamela, or Andre to our vote counter, and they, she will then let us know later, uh, Amelia, uh, who's done what. Now, we've had a number of people who have been sitting in the background, ferreting away, doing really interesting things tonight, and now they get a chance to tell us what interesting things they have been doing. For example. The grammarian tonight, and our grammarian was, and my sheet is over here, so I should look this up. Nkenji. Uh, 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 uh. Kenji. yes, I know it is. Uh, thank you for that. And Kenji, can you give us a grammarian's report, please? Sure. Greetings, fellow Toastmasters and guests. I'm happy to report tonight that we passed the quota of 14 uses of the word of the day. Of course, Angela, our tabletop master, let the pack. Well done. The language was very rich today. I believe Elaine started off with her great enthusiasm when she told Roxanne, your smile will always be your umbrella. After that, we had so many colloquialisms. We had proverbs, never count your eggs before they hatch. We had the colloquialism by Antoinette, which I kind of got got an idea, it simply meant in my part of the world, dress to kill. I also like the term helicopter parent and the play on the word, Halle. I love the way everybody just gave such great language, phenomenon, imposing, defy, lots of descriptive language tonight. We only had one little area that we can continue to work on and that was a bit of a word misusage, we can say rise, rise to the occasion in some instances, but it's better coming off as raise the hand rather than rise the hand. We also have in terms of much power, we need Hi, to think of our terms and say, and say. Your power. Thank you very much for that, Nkenji. Uh, a comprehensive report. Yes, we are running behind time or running right on time, so we need to keep our reports to one minute. He says to watch a Carl. All right, here we here we go. I put it into categories in order to, to, to get these things uh, in quickly, but I'm going to start with BDC. Brian, uh, you were 
talking about your camera being being off to the side and yes i noticed that you were in profile while while you were watching every, everybody but I, I i just want to let you know that your lighting is very evocative and it is it actually works the darkness with your face modeled it's okay you can um uh, work with that with that lighting now for low placement and that means people down here with all this stuff up uh, up above i i had nikenji which you corrected by the end dr tosh graham malfuzar uh tiana and people who need a little more light on their face were donna pamela jeanette and Toinette. i can't see your eyes I can't see your eyes and and they tell us so much and part of the problem with everybody there is the fact that uh, the background is so bright uh, for m many of you and the camera probably can't handle that. Lucas, you were the opposite. You were high, high place. You, you, you were high Hi, place. Mr. Watcher. And I, and I will stop right there. <laughs> Thank you, Carl. Thank you for that. But yes, watch what we're doing. Now, our um and ah, uh, no, uh, what have we got? Yeah, the R counter was Tosh, I believe. So, uh, Dr. Tosh, all yours for 60 seconds. Okay, perfect. I counted five us, seven ands, two likes, three so's, and two ums. And I didn't, I'm, I, we don't have time to name the names. If you want, I can put those in the chat or we can work on it as a group. That would be an excellent idea. Thank you for that. If you can put the, uh, the great sinners in the chat and those of us who did well. Yep. All right, thanks for that. Now our chat monitor is Christian. All right, Mr. Journal Evaluator, the chat wasn't that busy, but here's what I captured. On the theme of the day, John Quick observed that he has a full nest over the next 30 years, while our journal evaluator, the man from tomorrow, mentioned that he is celebrating by spending the kids' inheritance now. To our first speaker, uh, Roxanne observed she was dressed to push back foot in her vernacular. What does that mean? I don't know, but BDC and Donna Knight approved. The third speech, surprisingly, got Fun fact here, 44% of our members and guests engage in the chat. Interesting. And on helicopter parenting, two of our members have didn't hear about it, but David Carr mentioned hell on the offspring. Good that the timer Lou was not replying to the last table topics question. He had heard adultering. Um, and about timer Lou, he was on spot with a timing report in the chat at various moments, as well as our vote counter, Amelia, who was reminding our members to vote. The, the expression of the day is grand dogs. Grand dogs, thank you, Marty Sandler. Mr. Journal Evaluator, back to you. Thank you, uh, Mr. Chat Monitor, for keeping us up to speed on what came up in the chat. All right, time now to find out who are our winners for this evening. You've all had a chance to vote for the best speaker, the best evaluator, and the best topics. So can I ask our vote counter, uh, Emily, if you can please let us know how we have done tonight. Da -da 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 -da. Here are the votes. Okay, just sent it to... The best speaker, Marianne, table topics goes to Elaine and the award for the best evaluator. The favorite was Pamela. So well, well done. done, everybody. Well done. Thank you for being the vote counter. It's a difficult task because, you know, you've got to try and collate from multiple sources. You've done a terrific job. Congratulations to all of our winners this evening. I have about three minutes to give a general evaluation and there are a few observations that I wanted to make. First, for our individual evaluators. Uh, BDC's evaluation pointed out the value of storytelling, which was of course the theme of the project. Evaluators, may I suggest that you should let the listeners, the members of the audience know what is the theme and did the speaker meet the objectives of the project. But spoke about stretching boundaries. I want you to get scared. I thought that was really good advice to give to a developing speaker, uh, which Antoinette is. One suggestion I would have for BDC, and I would make this same suggestion, by the way, for Andre, is not to speak just in the first person. Not just you, just you, just you, but 
make it an overview, make it a third person presentation so that everybody gets to learn from your evaluation. Pamela's evaluation, I loved some of Pamela's gestures, including the reel us in, and I thought that was a beautiful gesture and pointed to suggestions about use of gestures in the speech that she was evaluating. But here's an interesting observation that I would make, not just for Pamela, for, but for everybody. When you're giving an evaluation, don't just say, I suggest you do this, but say, I suggest you do this because what are the benefits of using wider gestures? What are the benefits of not leaning too far in? What are the disadvantages of doing what you're doing? So don't just tell us what to do, but tell us why that makes us better communicators. Um, but really good to point out the busyness of the speech and a really good specific suggestion for ending with a power phrase. Andre's evaluation spoke about the motivational nature of the speech and I thought was a motivational evaluation in itself. Spoke about the use of three, which is something that uh, we should all be watching for. So well done on that and spoke about the tech difficulties, but did not mention the uh, fact that we were told at the beginning of, well, actually only mentioned in passing that we were told at the beginning of the speech what the motivation, that we would hear what the motivation for David was. We never actually did hear it. And I want to find out what the motivation for David was, at least as far as the speaker was concerned. So if we get 60 seconds, I will do that. I've only got 30 seconds left, so I'm not sure that's going to happen. The meeting started on time. The Sergeant at Arms, as always, enthusiastic. Uh, Nick's theme of empty nesters was, I thought, a really good one, and he did a terrific job as Toastmaster. I have, according to my agenda, 60 seconds left. So I'm going to ask, I'm going to take an executive decision and ask if, Roxanne, can you tell us in 60 seconds or less, what do you see as David's motivation? Why, yes, yes, I can tell you in 60 seconds or less. It was three times, three times that David heard what the king would do for the one who killed Goliath. He would give him great wealth. He would give him his daughter in marriage, and he would exempt him from taxes in all of Israel. So I suggest to you, that David's motivation was wealth, a mate, and exemption from taxes. So my fellow Toastmasters, if you're in it for the money, the mate, or exemption from taxes, you're in good company. Thank you, Roxanne. I, I wanted to hear that. I feel more complete now. And on that note, I will hand control back to our Toastmaster for the evening. No, actually, I'll, do I hand it just back to the president? I'm not sure. Who gets it now? Whoever it is, it's all yours. No problem. Whichever it is, I get the, I get the lectern. Thank you very much, Graham. Thank you very much, everybody, all our role players. I have two minutes to wrap up. I have an announcement from our VPE Christian. Uh, Andre is our Toastmaster next week, so sign up for any vacant roles. Please do that. Uh, the Toastmasters uh, have been taken up now for the month of October, but please sign up for November or December, or otherwise you will be signed up yourself. You will be voluntold. In terms of the October 19th evaluation contest, please make sure that you uh, sign up for, uh, for the uh, contesting, but also uh, we have chief judge and other roles available as well. Please talk to Christian. And we have lots of things going on. We have a few other things going on as well as uh, one of them is an interclub contest. If you want to have a go at helping out with an interclub contest online, global in December, there's a, there's a lot of work to do, but great leadership opportunities, see me. With that, I'd just like to spend one minute, just say hi to one of the guests. In fact, one of, in fact, just say hi to one of our members, John Quick. John, just say hi. Are you there? Hi, everyone. Just want you all to know I had to take a little break from Toastmasters. I was going to come back to the US in about two days, but it's just not possible for various reasons right now. So I'm making a move. I'm hoping to come back and see you soon. But whether you're new or you've been here a long time, I want you to know this is ended up being my favorite club that I've ever been a part of. And I really love being part of it. And I hope you will learn and get a lot of value out of it too.
So it's good to see you. I hope to see you again fairly soon. Thank you, John. Thank you. And I'm going to talk to some guests after we officially stop recording. So thank you very much for attending today. The last, last meeting of September, it's 9, 9 p.m. Eastern Daylight Time. And I call the meeting to close. And we will stop the recording.